This is just a tiny short clip that I wanted to show you. Let's take a look. Uh, as you know, NATO allies provide unprecedented level of military support to Ukraine. Actually, NATO allies and NATO have been there since 2014, trained, equipped. Uh whoa, 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 whoa. What? 2014? What did you say? Unprecedented level of military support to Ukraine. Actually, NATO allies and NATO have been there since 2014, trained, equipped, uh, and supported the Ukrainian armed forces. Uh you what? You did what? Oh my God! How can he say that? This is the Secretary General of NATO, and he's spewing Russian propaganda? <laughs> you remember that? Uh, you can't say that, uh, boy. That's Kremlin propaganda. We have nothing to do with the Ukrainians. 2014? I don't, I don't quite recall Russian propaganda coming out of his mouth. I have to listen to that again. I'm doing quadruple takes, not, not double takes. Uh, as you know, NATO allies provide unprecedented level of military support to Ukraine. Oh. Actually, NATO allies and NATO have been there since 2014, trained, equipped, uh, and supported the Ukrainian armed forces. Uh, but of course, since the invasion in February, allies have stepped up significantly, and we also agreed um, uh, uh, a comprehensive assistance package uh, uh, also on how to... <laughs> a comprehensive assistant assistance package. What the fuck does that mean? Did you throw bandages and cookies at them? Like that, that could literally mean anything. I know that he didn't come up with that because that is American. A comprehensive assistance package. That an, an American wrote that and coined that. <laughs> wow. Wow. Assistant package uh, uh, also on how to help uh, Ukraine uh, <laughs> to move from Soviet air equipment to more modern NATO standard uh, uh, equipment and also. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I bet you do. Right. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fact that the arms manufacturers are making a bunch of dinero. Right. A bunch of bachish. Huh? A bunch of flus. Fat wads of cash. Right? Nothing to do with that. That, that would just be a coincidence, right? That, that you're giving tens of billions of dollars to your friends who produce weapons. Right? To move from Soviet air equipment to more modern NATO standard Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, of course, right? And also... Uh, they gotta upgrade them. They gotta upgrade them. Because they're, they're using the iPhone 1 and uh, they, they got to have the latest. They must have the latest. That Soviet era stuff? Mm -mm. You, you, listen, you want this modern NATO equipment. Oh, yes, you do. You got to get the iPhone 14, don't you? Oh, yeah. It's a comprehensive assistance package. You're going to love it. So how to provide more support also for the longer term, building defense and security uh, institutions uh, in, in, uh, in Ukraine. The message uh, was that we will provide support uh, for us <laughs> as long as it takes. I bet you will. You see that, by the way? This is my outlet in context. Uh, that, this is exactly why you guys go need to subscribe and follow in context on YouTube, on Twitter, because we're posting real news like this all the time. I want to go back to what uh, Jens Stoltenberg is uh, saying here about Ukraine, because, you know, whenever you bring up the fact that, OK, um, I don't support the war in Ukraine, but you can't deny that NATO has been provoking Russia, right? They say, oh, no, my God, no, 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 you can't say that. That's Kremlin propaganda. That came from Putin's mouth. You can't say that. You cannot say that. But hold, but hold on. NATO's been in Ukraine since 2014, training them, you know? Like, in top right. Oh, no, no, no. No. Soviet propaganda. It's getting worse, right? But NATO's been training them for interoperability, right? So it's like a modular project. You take an Italian unit out and you put a Ukrainian 
unit in and the Ukrainian unit can speak with the other unit, the British unit, and they can cooperate together because NATO has trained them to the same standard. Oh, no, no, that's Kremlin propaganda. Well, damn, man, you need to check your man uh, Stoltenberg because he just, he just spit it all out. So basically, he's admitting what we have known all along, which is that since 2014, the West has, again, listen to this. They didn't allow Ukraine to join NATO, but they certainly penetrated uh, Ukraine on many levels, on multiple levels. So basically, Ukrainian troops, which, by the way, don't worry, it's just a few Nazis, nothing, nothing serious, just a few. It's just a couple, all right? It's just a couple Nazis have been trained to work on par with NATO units. That can't provoke Russia, of course, right? Like, you know, why, why would that matter? Who cares? It's, you know, like, I'm sure if Russia was training Mexican troops, um, you know, near the U.S. border, the U.S. would be cool, right? They wouldn't mind, they wouldn't mind that. Oh, yeah, of course not. You know, maybe just like nuke Mexico or something. These people are spitting it out right in front of you, right in front of me, and pointing that out, their own words. Again, I, I'm not saying that Ukrainian troops uh, have been uh, training with NATO in Ukraine since 2014. I, I didn't say that. The Secretary General of NATO did. You don't need me. If I didn't even exist, he still said it. And we are not allowed to point out the truth in this day and age because pointing out the truth, you know, pointing out that the emperor has no clothes and then <laughs> the, the, the Western uh, empire is collapsing, you can't do that. That's Russian propaganda. I wanted to show you this clip because it's so funny and interesting sometimes how these officials, they straight up uh, say the exact same thing that, you know, we crackpots are saying, right? <laughs> uh, and then... No one cares, and it, 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 it's just like they, they brush it off like it's nothing. And you, you and me, you know, and other independent journalists, whoever, anyone, just, just listening to this clip and pointing that out is forbidden, verboten, because there is hysteria. There is a mass panic, mass hysteria uh, era that we're living in. You understand? It's like the Red Scare, and... and of course, there, there were already two red scares. You got to have multiple red scares. Always, you know, keep the Russians on their toes. <laughs> so, you know, the red scare, basically, I'm referring to specifically uh, in the uh, aftermath of World War II. So this is a, during the Cold War. You had a senator. Well, uh, he wasn't a senator. He was a congressperson, let's just, uh, if I'm not mistaken. McCarthy, right? So he was basically the one who led these witch hunts, these... Um, uh, you know, political persecutions against people that he didn't like. And he would, you know, they'd accuse them basically of being a communist or being a Soviet sympathizer or whatever, whatever, and destroy their careers, humiliate them, you know, eviscerate them just by accusing them of this and that. And today we are in a third Red Scare. Uh, and to the point that I'm, I mean, I don't even know what to say, because when they do shit like banning people in, in the EU uh, from buying houses because, or any property because they're a Russian citizen, I mean, I don't, I, I'm just stunned. I'm just stunned. I'm not saying it's, it's, it's that much worse than in the 50s. Let's just say it's on par, shall we? <laughs> you know, like right now, it's just straight up Russophobia. Enjoy the mass hysteria while we are still in it. <laughs> and uh, never forget, sometimes uh, politicians, military officials, and the like can be honest. It's just the media won't tell you what they said.